Hi! I figured it was time for another London in fiction video. I did one, I think about a year ago, where I talked about five books that were all set in London, which you can watch right here. And today I'm doing part two. First up, we have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. I've owned this book for a very, very long time and I finally started reading it this week. And it's about a woman, Clarissa Dalloway, and it's set on a June morning in 1923 as she goes about her business in London. She takes a walk through Green Park, which is really close to Buckingham Palace, and she also goes to Hatchards, which is a bookshop that still exists right now, and she looks through the window at all the books that are there. And although the books at the time obviously would have been very different, I think the atmosphere is probably still very similar. This book is a very kind of stream of consciousness way of telling the story. It's just her thoughts on the page and I found the only way I could read this is by reading it out loud to myself. Before I started reading it I didn't think it would be for me but I am very very much enjoying it and especially the fact that the places are so easy to imagine for me because I walk there on a daily basis made this book kind of extra special. Then we have Robert Galbraith's The Cuckoo's Calling which as you guys probably know this is actually J.K. Rowling writing a crime novel. I've had this on my shelves for the longest time, but I'm finally reading it right now. It's about a supermodel who dies by what people think is committing suicide, jumping from a balcony. There's a private detective who has just broken up with his fiance, I think. He can barely afford the rent on his little office. There's a girl who's sent to him to be his secretary as a temp. And then that morning, he finally gets a client, and it is a family member of the model who's died, who's offering a nice sum of money for the detective, who's called Cormoran Strike, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one, to look into what the man thinks is actually a murder. One of the first scenes in this book is a description of the temp secretary, who's called Robin, being proposed to in Piccadilly Circus and there's a description of her going on the tube to work because the office of the private detective is closed at Tottenham Court Road. So I'm currently in the middle of reading this and I'm excited to see where this will take us in London. Then we have one that I sort of thought took place in London more than it actually does and it is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. I think I read the entire series when I was about 10 years old and I completely forgot about them until the first movie came out and I told my mom that I really liked the look of it and she said you used to be obsessed with this series. The film starts out in the middle of London during the Blitz and then they get put on a train to the countryside which happened with lots of kids to keep them safe. And when they get to the countryside and live in this huge house is when they, you know, discover the wardrobe and go into Narnia. And obviously at that point London is very very far away. And then there's also the book called Prince Caspian which is the second film where they have left Narnia and then they go back when they're in a tube station and the train goes past and suddenly they're in Narnia. So what I was going to do was go to that tube station and get some footage there and then I realized that that was shot in a closed off tube station on the Strand. And that is a street in London where the office of Penguin is actually based. Anyways, for me these books are connected to London even though this book technically starts out when they're already in the countryside. Then there is a book that I don't have a physical copy of right now and it's actually a series called the Shades of London series by Maureen Johnson and the cover of the first book looks like this. It's called The Name of the Star. This is about an American girl called Rory who goes to London to go to a boarding school and what's happening in the neighborhood while she's there that someone is recreating the Jack the Ripper murders. And so it is set in all the places where the Jack the Ripper murders took place, which is in Whitechapel. I've been on a Jack the Ripper tour before. There's this pub called The Ten Bells, which plays a part in the story. And then there's also a building that's a couple of streets away that Maureen has said could be the place where the school is. I've also read the second book, The Madness Underneath, and I really, really enjoyed it. Also takes place in London. And I'm excited to read the third one, which is actually being published by Hotkey Books. And then finally, as this tradition, there is one that I haven't read yet, which is on my to read list, and it is Zadie Smith's NW, which from what I've heard of it is completely wrapped up in London as a location. It's about four Londoners who grew up on council estates and then it's kind of the story of how they continue their lives. The back of the book says, from private houses to public parks, at work and at play, their city is brutal, beautiful and complicated. This will also be the first Sadie Smith I'm reading. As usual, I will leave all the information in the description box below and I also have a fun discount code for you guys for all the books that I mentioned in this video and in the previous London 
Londonin Fiction video, which is 10 in total. In the description you will find a link to the book depository where you can get a 10% discount on all these books this week. I'm also a book depository affiliate, which means I get a small cut from all the sales that are made, and the book depository has free international shipping. If you have any more suggestions for books set in London that I haven't talked about before, leave them in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys later. Doei!